Hello and dwarves. welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Today I'm going to show you how to sort of refurb and spruce up an aging MacBook Pro. Uh, now what we've got here is a 2000 and... Uh, I don't know what this is actually, I think this is a 2010 MacBook Pro. Um, and it's in pretty ropey condition. It's come in just for everything really. Firstly, its battery doesn't work. The clicker is not working properly either. Um, and there's complaints that it's very slow. Um, now, firstly, while I was checking what size the hard drive in it was, so I knew what kind of possibilities we had for upgrades, uh, the first thing I noticed was that the back panel was under a lot of tension. When I unscrewed it, I found we had a swollen battery. So that's why this back panel is already loose. So that's why our battery doesn't work. So um, this also explains why the trackpad is not working very well, because a swollen battery as you can see, that's uh, looking a little bit wide. It's not the worst I've ever seen, but it shouldn't look like that. It should be completely flat. A swollen battery is gonna put pressure on the back of the trackpad, and it's gonna stop it clicking properly. And in extreme cases, it may even push the trackpad up into a bulge or even crack the trackpad. So this fella's gotta come out straight away. Um, now we've got a 250 gig hard drive in this fella, which also points to it being an older model. In fact, this may even be a two, I think this is probably closer to a 2009 one. I think this might be a Core 2 Duo. Um, now the Core 2 Duo is really showing its age, but if you drop an SSD into these things, they actually become fairly decent laptops again. And SSDs these days are cheap, especially when you only need 250 gigs. So we're gonna get a 250 gig SSD, a new battery, and we're gonna clean this whole thing up, transfer the data across, and uh, yeah, put the latest version of MacOS on it. So, uh, I'm gonna buy some parts and I'll see you guys after the cut. Uh, okay, so I've received my first component, for, upgrade component for this thing, which is a shiny new SSD. This is a Samsung 750 Evo. Um, now, there is an 850 Evo, which is quicker than this. However, this is an older MacBook Pro and it's only got serial 882, so we're not looking for blistering SSD performance here. Um, these 750 EVOs are a little bit cheaper than the 850s, so you can save yourself a bit of money and still get big SSD performance. So let's drop out this hard drive with these two screws here. <coughs> and now we'll swap the, uh, um, the pegs over to the SSD. Now it's worth noting, um, in order to transfer the data, I'm going to connect this drive with a USB bridge later on down the line. If you don't have a USB bridge, I recommend making sure that you've done a full time machine backup uh, first, and then you'll be able to restore your data from your time machine hard drive afterwards. Of course, another advantage of uh, going solid state is that now this thing is shockproof and we don't need to worry about the hard drive failing due to the laptop being moved about while turned on anymore. The only moving part left is the cooling fan. So, right, the next thing I'm going to do is just give this thing a blowout to get rid of any dust that's trapped in here or under the uh, logic board. Uh, I use an air compressor for this. If you don't have an air compressor available, um, get your T6 screwdriver and just remove these three screws here, here and here and you'll be able to take that fan out and you can just use a soft brush or a paint brush or something like that just to make sure that's all clear of dust. Okay, so that is all nice and dusted out now. So next thing we're gonna do is drop in our battery and then this thing is ready to start up and install MacOS. The last piece of the puzzle has arrived. In goes our new battery. Okay, so before we move on to the um, software side of it, I'm gonna give this a physical cleanup. Uh, I was hoping to replace that key there, but unfortunately my donor keyboard has a slightly different variation on the scissor mechanism, so I don't have the parts needed for that. Uh, if we were being particularly pedantic, I could probably order a replacement keycap from eBay for a couple of quid, including the scissor mechanism and the little rubber spring and stuff like that. But uh, that's not essential, it's only the F9 key, I'm not that bothered. So I'm just gonna hit it with the window cleaner and just give this a wipe down.
Good to go. That's looking much shinier now. Okay, right, so let's turn this thing on. So I'm gonna press power button and I'm gonna hold down option until I get a boot menu. Now this thing's a little bit sulky because I haven't actually got the new battery in because it hasn't actually been delivered. However, you will have already seen me fit it because I'll edit it to make it look like everything was delivered. Okay, right, so uh, we have a boot menu now. Unfortunately, my capture card can't capture these things pre-boot yet, so uh, I'm just gonna angle the camera. Right, I'm gonna plug in my MacOS Sierra flash drive, which I've pre-made. If you don't have one of these, you can either, um, uh, let me see, if you don't have one of these, you can use online rescue, or if you are lesser equipped, what you should already have is a time machine backup and you can boot from your time machine hard drive. So plug in your time machine and you can boot from there. So let's say okay, and let's get that thing started up. Okay, we're into MacOS Utilities, and um, let me see. Have I got multi-screen support? Yes, I do. Let's just see if the capture will come up for me. Okay, so first of all, we need to disk utility our new SSD to get it ready for a MacOS install. So we're going to select our Samsung SSD and we're going to erase it. And we're going to call that Samsung. Now we're going to go OSX Extended Journal and GUID Partition Map. Go! Skadoosh. Done. And we can close Disk Utility. And we can go ahead and install MacOS. Bam! Alright, continue. Agree. This is my inaugural installation of MacOS Sierra. I'm just going to select our Samsung. I've been running the beta on my main laptop since uh, the public beta came out, but this is the first uh, public release install I've done. My grotty old MacBook Pro 13 inch. Right, let's leave that to run. Okay, we're currently on another loading screen, so we're just going to wait for it to get through that progress bar. Okay, it's just done its rigmarole and restarted, and we're just loading up the desktop for the first time. Uh, okay, United Kingdom, British keyboard. Now we're going to connect to my Wi Fi. Okay, right, so uh, once again, if you have a time machine backup, now is the time to plug it in. Um, now I am going to, yeah, I'm gonna connect up our old hard drive at this point and I'm gonna leave that to run the data transfer. Uh, I can unplug my flash drive now and where is our old drive, there it is. Plug that in. Whoop. Let's get rid of this because it's not helping right now. Right, we're going to from a startup disk. Looking for source. Macintosh HD. Continue. Yeah, we're going to bring across, I'm not going to bring across computer settings. We'll just bring across applications, docs and data. And off we go. All right. See you guys after another progress bar. Hi. I kind of forgot to record the last section of this video where I say thanks for watching and blah, 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 blah. Uh, basically, once we've gotten through this progress bar, which can take anything from 30 minutes to a couple of hours, depending on how much data you've got, 
Um, you can then log into the laptop using the previous username and password that you were using and then just give it a quick tidy up, run uh, application update, that sort of thing. And then you're pretty much done. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye for now.